And you're listening to Communities Live on Sheffield Live Radio 93.2 FM with me, Susie Casson and T-Boy. And we're joined in the studio by Dave Pickersgill, friend of the show. Welcome back, Dave. Hello. And you are the Pub Heritage Officer for Sheffield Camera. That's correct, yes. Brilliant. And you've been busy since we last met, I think. Well, we're always busy. <laughs> yeah. So can you say, first of all, what is Camera? C-A-M-R-A. Uh, Camera, the Campaign for Real Ale, um, was founded... To just over 40 years ago, which makes it sound like an incredibly old organisation. But um, at the time, it was a reaction against um, large, mostly national, pushing multinational brewery companies that were pushing poor quality beer. I mean, all I need to say to people of a certain age is what is Red Barrel, and <laughs> we understand. Yes. Um, they, there was a tendency of taking over small family-owned breweries, closing them down, establishing local monopolies and the like. Um, prime example is tenants who in... 15 years close 17 local breweries having wow. taken them over. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, Whitbread Tenants in Sheffield was, was one of them in 1993. Mm-hmm. Um, the year before, they'd actually spent uh, a few million pounds on redoing the plant, and then a year later, they closed it. So, mm-hmm. so there it goes. Anyway, Camera um, basically fought against this. We were described in the 90s as the most successful consumer group in Europe, and now in the 21st century, um, the, the situation has changed and the, the availability of beers in, in a city like Sheffield is is tremendous. You know, on any one day in Sheffield, if you really wish to, you could find basically a beer for every day of the, of the every day of the year. You know, 350, 360 beers without really looking. Um, 20 years ago, if you could find um, 10 different cast condition beers in Sheffield, you were doing well. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, 20, 30 years ago. So camera um, now, campaign for real ale, Cast conditioned beer is out there, is available. The one concern we have at the moment, one major concern, is the um, lack of places to drink cast conditioned ale, as in pubs. Cast conditioned ale is a living product, you need sellers, you need people to look after it. Um, we are concerned about the, the number of pubs that are, are closing for all sorts of reasons. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you first become involved with camera? Um, oh, it was back in the back in the seventies, um, which is why I was, I'm quite interested to listen to what Dave Hill's got to say because I do remember oh. them being number one in the charts. Yeah. Um, back in the seventies, I'm playing my dad. He bought me the uh, 1976 Good Beer Guide when I was down at university in Sheffield drinking Tetley's at the Red Deer. Um, I've been involved in Sheffield Camera since seriously since about 1980. Um, I've actually worked at every Sheffield beer festival since 1981, which makes it sound incredibly ancient, mm-hmm. but never mind. That's um, but yeah, got involved in in the, the late 70s, early 80s, and, and I've been involved ever since. Um, and your pub heritage officer, what does that involve exactly? It's involved. Well, we invented the the title a few years ago. But that's that's what you do sometimes. <laughs> um, Last few years, I've been involved a lot with the various um, asset of community value um, issues to do with local pubs, which actually took a fair amount of time. The result of all that is that a number of pubs in Sheffield have got ACV status, but the law has changed in that um, for change of use in a pub, you now have to get planning permission. So the, the real need for getting ACV status has actually gone, mm-hmm. which is good because now concentrate on, on more positive aspects. Um, the, the big positive aspect that um, happened a couple of months ago was... Um, we produced a free downloadable Sheffield Pub Heritage book using exactly the same format as the National Camera Regional Pub Heritage Guides. Um, some of the same people were involved, um, the same design style. The good thing, because this book is free and downloadable, uh, PDF, 81 pages, 300 odd images, 30,000 words. The good thing is because we went for a downloadable PDF, we weren't restricted on space, as in the regional guides have you know, one, perhaps two photos of a pub. The ones we like, we can put 10 photos in, absolutely mm. no problem. Also, Sheffield Archives have been brilliant. They've got loads of um, plans, maps, various other documents, and they've allowed us to take photos and use some of those documents in the book as well. So what we've ended up with is a, a slightly different pub heritage guide, certainly more text, um, more, I think, back, background stories, backdrop stories are in there as well than you, you normally get in a pub heritage guide. Um, as I say, came out um, to coincide with the, the last Sheffield Beer Festival last October, um, we thought if we get a thousand downloads, that'd be great. Um, it got to ten thousand, and it's been going up ever since. Um, over the last twenty-four hours since yesterday morning, there's just over four hundred downloads, and the total now, as of this morning, is twenty-six thousand six hundred and fifty-one, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, if this was a hard copy book, it would, I think it would be the camera top seller book ever. <laughs> but that's, that's the way it is. Um, feedback's been, been really good. And um, we've had lots of emails saying 
this is great. Do you know about that? We've also had a few emails um, just pointing out the odd typo and spelling error, which we, of course, have corrected. Mm. It's, uh, doing a book um, as, a, as a free download, it, it basically it gets crowd proofread, which, <laughs> which happened in the first sort of month or so. Um, so we changed all the, the errors that people have spotted, and now we haven't touched it for about two months. So yeah. that is the first edition. It's sitting there, it's available. Get out there, download it, have a look at it, and, uh, and see what you think. Um, Excellent, yeah. So the camera camera's a national organization with lots of branches and mm-hmm. you're you belong to the Sheffield branch. Can you tell us a bit about the branch? Um yeah, Sheffield District branch originally formed, as I say, back in the, the mid seventies when around the time it was one of the, the earlier um camera branches. When it was first formed it was actually Sheffield and South Yorkshire and encompassed Doncaster, Rotherham, Barnsley, Chesterfield and yeah. God knows where, it's a huge area. Yeah. Um, since then other branches have been formed and we, we now basically look after um, the city of Sheffield and parts of Derbyshire, basically the Hope Valley and a little bit of North East Derbyshire up towards um, Killer Marsh, that, that sort of Spinkill, that sort of area. So it's the city of Sheffield and a bit more, a little bit more, hence the Sheffield and District. Um, what do we actually do? Um, monthly magazine, which being a monthly comes out 11 times a year, not 12, <laughs> that's it. We, have, we do a double Christmas issue. Um, monthly magazine, annual beer festival, um, which is the last few years has been at um, Kellerman Industrial Museum. 19, uh, sorry, 2018, the 44th Sheffield Beer Festival scheduled for 10th to 13th of October, so hopefully we'll see you there. Mm-hmm. Um, Beer Matters, the monthly magazine, next edition will come out late January, that will be the February 2018 edition. Um, we do all sorts of, obviously all sorts of other things, um, running a, a fairly successful, well, no, highly successful beer festival takes a fair bit of planning, a fair bit of expertise, a fair bit of work, so we're always looking for volunteers to assist. Um, we will look after the the Watt Pub entry, uh, Sheffield Watt Pub entries on the, the Camera Pub database. Um, I'm visiting Bradfield Brewery tomorrow to sort out their entry for the 2019 Camera Good Beer Guide. Uh, so you know, lots mm. to be done, lots happened, and it, it all flows flows quite nicely. Yeah, also lot- get jo- joining because we've got quite friendly room. We do drink beer. Yes, mm. <laughs> and lots of students in Sheffield. Do they tend to join Camera? Um, they, both the student unions um, tend to have real ale societies and we, we link across with them. Um, our beer festival in October is actually quite a good time for students to come to Sheffield because they've you know, usually only been in the city like four or five weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're obviously quite welcome to volunteer. We tend to get an awful lot of journalist students wanting to do stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we tend to do is say, work a session and you can do an interview, <laughs> which is quite reasonable. Yeah. Um, also, it's good for their CVs. Mm. Um, but yeah, students do get involved, come on to meetings. Uh, we do have young person socials and the like. Um, but yeah. Great. Yeah, very busy then. So, so all you, welcome. Yeah, great. So you're you're already planning for the beer festival. Um, the first planning meeting for the 2018 um, Sheffield Beer Festival is actually next Tuesday, oh. eight o'clock <laughs> at the Harlequin right. um, on Nursery Street, and we have a planning meeting basically once a month. Um, the chair of the planning group's in place already because it follows on from the last last year's beer festival. Um, we know the the key jobs people. Are, know what they're doing and we'll basically we'll carry on doing them but there's all there's lots to be done I mean, if people want to be involved in um planning and volunteering for sheffield um 2018 beer festival next tuesday the harlequin eight o'clock sounds good and do you also lead pub heritage walks in sheffield um yeah i've done a few in the last few years this all started as um an, a request from heritage open days which oh. happens in september um there's a request from Heritage Open Day saying, could Camera do a, something to do with pubs? They were incredibly vague about it. So we had a think and do, c- came up with um, a, a pub heritage walk, as in starting at um, a pub that's on the Sheffield lo- uh, the local inventory of um, National Inventory of Pub Interiors, doing a you know mile or so walk, passing a few more, popping in one or two of us, and finishing off at um, the Bath Hotel, which is on the National Inventory of Pub Interiors, the Camera National Inventory. So... Um, Takes about an hour and a half or so. I believe you didn't you go on one last I've year. I've been on one. It was yeah. really good. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. That's what yes. I like to hear. Um, <laughs> and it's happened to have, I think four or five times so far. Um, we'll be happening again in March as part of Sheffield Beer Week, and again Heritage Open Days in September. Um, if you put Sheffield Heritage on Eventbrite, you'll find the, the tickets. Tickets for the Beer Week are. Minimal about two quid, I think. Mm. Um, for heritage open days, it's free, so you know, just book a place and uh, mm. and come along. Um, yeah, mm. start up 
start but takes about what an hour and a half or so mm. and um people do tend to enjoy it which is great yeah. and a great way to see the city in a new way isn't it oh, you, sort of yeah, from a different it's, angle it's interesting when we yeah. planned this um two or three years ago you sort of walk the route and you look above shop mm. level and <laughs> you see things you've not seen before yeah um the building on um glossop road that's got four different date stones at the top oh. i think it's four Four different date stones at the top. There's a, a statue of a dog on oh. um, Bailey Lane, which you just don't see if you're walking mm. past. You actually got to look at them and spot it. <laughs> um, the Tiger Works on West Street, um, which is all to do with um, one of the, the original Cutley Works, whose name I can't remember, but never mind. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, all sorts of little bits and bobs uh, yeah. to do with Sheffield, and obviously we we call into. Um, sort of key heritage pubs, uh, including the one where the Arctic Monkeys apparently did their first gig, oh. and um, the one, well, and, and others. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So th- we've got the new publication out, Sheffield's Real Heritage Pubs, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Mm-hmm. But f- uh, can you just say quickly why you chose the theme of the interior of the pubs? Um, it's it's going back to um, camera looking at. Um, it, pub heritage going back 20 30 years um initial work happened in york and what people were really interested in is the inside of pubs that effectively hasn't changed over years because in the 60s 70s an awful lot of pubs basically got ripped out um they went from lots of smallish rooms intimate atmospheres wood paneling and the like to a sort of large semi solar space um we can think of many examples in Sheffield. Um, Blue 88 on West Street is a fine example. If you look at the um, original plans for that pub from 1902-ish, um, it is separate rooms with a corridor down the middle, and currently it's a, a large space. It was basically destroyed in the 1970s. So Cameron Nationally was looking for pubs that effectively hadn't changed, so it's interiors of pubs. Exteriors of pubs, a lot of pubs, that the exteriors haven't really changed because you can't do a lot with, uh, with bricks and mortar. But the inside is the key thing. If the inside has, is relatively unchanged or the parts of pubs are relatively unchanged, they're the pubs that go onto the um, camera National Pub Heritage lists. Um, in Sheffield, there's 22 pubs now that are national inventory or regional inventory, so they're on the, the national list. But there's a lot of other pubs that have got bits of stuff which are are the um, pubs we try to include in the in the Sheffield listing. So we've got the national list, we've got the regional inventory, and then we've got the ones that have got bits, which are the ones we found. Um, you know, the odd bit of tile work, the odd bit of um, set of windows, and with Rivlin Hotel, for example, in on um, Rivlin Valley, the nice little um, doorsteps and original Gilmore's windows. It's there because of that. The inside's been a bit ripped out, nothing particularly epic there, but it's got a few features. Um, Hillsborough Hotel, same, it's got windows, it's got some nice doorsteps. Um, so, yeah, what we've tried to do, I think, is take the ones that are nationally recognised, obviously include those in the book, but also include lots of um, little bits and bits and pieces around the place. We've also included um, some examples of maybe tile work from, from pubs that were closed years ago, um, Greyhound in Attercliffe has got a wonderful Greyhound in tiles. I mean, it's still there. It's an office building now. Mm-hmm. Um, the new inn on, I think it's Carbot Road, has got a ni- an early 20th century pub frontage, for, which Stones has did, very similar to um, a similar pub in Rotherham. And that is that is ornate. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. But it's been closed for like 30, 40 years. 